Upon leaving the theater screening of the Joker movie, a lot came to mind at once as I started contemplating what exactly I just watched. In terms of the more obvious, I thought chiefly of mental illness. I thought of the glaring flaws in the American mental health care system, how various medicines can have no effect, how therapists, rather than truly caring about their clients and listening to them, will instead give predetermined responses reminiscent of automated phone calls, resulting in a loss of your time and money, and the issue isn't solved. I thought of how social media and even that of the mainstream has grown into a culture of seemingly endless abuse of others, laughing at their misfortunes and plastering their faces for all the world to see so we can laugh at their expense. We relish the taste of our temporary enjoyment while remaining blithely ignorant of how our actions can mentally and emotionally scar the people we mock so flippantly. I thought of the dehumanization of others we find lesser than us, the way we project our subjective ideals upon other people and if they fail to meet our own criteria, we ridicule them, vilify them, and mentally turn them into something that's no longer a person with an idea, but to something of an animal. I thought of classism, the divide between the rich and the poor, the fortunate and unfortunate, those in power and those subjected to that power, and how neither side truly understands the other, nor makes any real attempt to. Joker is a bizarre gem in a time rife with political, sociological, and ideological unrest throughout the world. A movie unafraid to not only criticize all sides, but to make them all look equally sympathetic, as well as equally reprehensible. It draws immediate and direct attention to the forefront of the pressing issue of mental health, a problem that many people in power acknowledge, but then never actually do anything about. Couple that with a knockout performance from Joaquin Phoenix, fantastic cinematography unblemished by the hideous overuse of bad CGI that's plagued every major DC release since Man of Steel, a surprisingly compelling, airtight, powerful plot that interweaves its themes without the use of overbearing political commentary, and a simply superb musical score composed by Hilder, I'm not even going to attempt that last name, and you have what is undoubtedly the best film released in 2019. So so, to say it irritates me beyond measure that the movie, despite winning well-deserved praises from audiences worldwide, is being lambasted by the media with some of the most intellectually dishonest arguments I've seen for any work of fiction in recent memory would be a bit of an understatement. Smear article after hit piece after vicious, spiteful tweet has been used to turn what is perhaps the most intelligent, hard-hitting, realistically grounded film in recent memory into something that it's not. I've collectively read something around a dozen articles specifically made to bash the film. Now, if you want to criticize a movie based on character inconsistencies, plot holes, or any kind of mechanical flaws you can demonstrably prove to be a detriment to the final product, then I have no issue hearing you out. I've had some movies like The Force Awakens go from something genuinely great to something genuinely terrible based on very good objective argumentation I've seen across YouTube and other websites. In others, I've had movies elevated, turning something I previously didn't much care for into perhaps one of my favorite films of all time like The Prestige. I find that there's a lot of movies that fall into the camp of being rated very high by its fans, but have so many issues that I can't ever in good conscience call them good films. Ironically, given the Joker's origins, that can be used to describe literally every single DCEU movie. I'd go as far as to say that Joker is the first DC film since The Dark Knight that isn't a total dumpster fire. But since that's an entirely different video for another day, we'll try not to get too hung up on that particular topic. The the point is, if Joker had some serious plot-related, character-related, or mechanical-related issues that dragged the film down, then it would be the duty of honest reviewers to point out those flaws. Furthermore, it would be the duty of a particularly good reviewer to explain how those flaws could be remedied for improvement in the future. Criticism is fine and all, but it becomes hollow if there's no attempt at suggesting how someone can improve. And yes, this extends to the whole dozen or so people who will actually find this video, so they can inform me how I can likewise improve in the future. The core issue I've found in reading all these articles about the Joker film, however, is that none of them delve into the actual mechanics of the script or filmmaking process. Rather, they focus on political commentary that they wrongly interpret from the film or otherwise project upon it to enforce their own agendas. Now, before I go any further, I should make a disclaimer here and just hope I won't have to repeat it too many times in the future. I hate politics. Despite its prevalence in how the world is run, it's 
almost always the most divisive and infuriating topic to cover with any side of the wide political spectrum. It's genuinely made me dislike people I thought were otherwise fun to be around or follow, not because I even necessarily disagree with everything they're saying, but because of how it's affected the way they act and treat others. I've lost a lot of respect for people I used to look up to just because of the way that politics have changed how they act. And unlike many people you'll find on YouTube or other corners of the internet, I'm going to try my best to be the opposite of the people who blame all issues on a specific side of politics. As someone who grew up right wing, went through a very far left phase for a few years and now don't know where I stand since the same people I thought I was aligned with actually seem to hate me, I found that it doesn't really matter where you stand. Both sides feature good people, both sides feature bad. I don't want to play this impossibly stupid game of which side is the bad guy, nor do I even really want to discuss politics outside of this video unless it's extremely relevant to the subject matter I'm already covering. But there is something to be said that the more left-wing side of the political spectrum has chiefly been the one championing the defamation of this film, which is ironic given how fervently they defended 2017's Star Wars The Last Jedi based on its themes. I've seen everything from attempts to say that the film makes a direct correlation between mental illness and violence to saying it outright supports white supremacy and glorifies murder. It's often been linked to the Aurora, Colorado shooting, despite the Joker not even being in the movie the shooting took place in. All of this stems from a severe and dangerous thought process that the movie itself is specifically speaking out against, a process that people on the far side of the toxic political spectrum are not only ignoring, but for years have been consistently propagating. The arguments are already flimsy enough, but to see these asinine accusations applied to the film justified with, it doesn't fit perfectly into my political ideology is quite insulting. An article from NBC's Think, an ironic name given how little thought was actually put into the writing of it, criticized the movie for refusing to take a hardline stance one way or the other with the issue of classism. Another from Insider suggests that the movie correlates mental illness with violence, which is simply not the case with the film. Arthur's mother is also mentally ill, but isn't shown to be a violent person. At best, one of her boyfriends beat her and her adopted son, and she was accused of child endangerment for it, but she specifically doesn't seem to be a violent person whatsoever, just tragically delusional. It's not being used as a blanket statement for mental illness. The article then goes on to say that the film is very much a commentary of how society doesn't do enough to nurture people who experience mental illness. This, again, is not the point the film was making. You would have to ignore absolutely all of the context for the first hour and a half to come away with this impression. Arthur is repeatedly beaten, screwed over by his co-workers and employers, mocked and ridiculed openly by hundreds if not thousands of people, and ignored by the people pretending to care enough to help him. This is not commentary of how society doesn't do enough, it's commentary about how the people within a society can poison a man's mind and turn him into a monster. It's the stark lack of nuance, the reaping of context, and the dehumanization of the character that these very critics are taking part in, and their stark lack of self-awareness prevents them from realizing that that's exactly what the movie is speaking against. Take, for example, two pivotal scenes in the movie. Arthur's first major grisly murder in his appearance on The Murray Franklin Show. In the former, Arthur viciously murders his co-worker in front of another. This co-worker, though not necessarily intentionally, gave Arthur the gun that made him lose his only source of reliable income. After the fact, he threw Arthur under the bus and allowed for his mocking by the other clowns in the studio. It was Lee Gill's character who was spared in this scene, Arthur's explanation being that he was the only one who never said anything anything mean to him. Likewise, when he was brought on the Murray Franklin show to be openly mocked in front of a live audience and on air, the Joker made it abundantly clear that it was the savagery of how people treated him. The way he was so openly and relentlessly mocked without any regard for how that would affect him mentally or emotionally that led him to commit murder. We as the audience are meant to sympathize with the Joker, to understand intimately his struggles, his motivations, his aspirations, his desires 
and the demons that plague his conscience. We see him struggle with his job and ultimately lose it, knowing intellectually that there's a reason he had the gun and that his concerns were justified, but he's never given the chance to have his voice heard, and he's screwed over for it. We see the people supposed to help him with his mental problems not really care about him as a person, a fact he addresses directly which the therapist ignores. We see him beaten, insulted, rejected, and lied to constantly. His journey from a struggling man with hopeless, yawning depression into a man who turned that misery into rage is not only incredibly natural, but eerily realistic. He's designed to be a character we can, on some level, relate to and care about. That does not, however, mean we are supposed to agree with him. This is the same kind of argumentation I've seen against Avengers Infinity War's Thanos. Though he's not half as good a character as Arthur was in Joker, the attempt to make him a three-dimensional character who had genuine feelings and motivations grounded in some level of consistency is what made him so much more compelling than many of his predecessors in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're meant to sympathize with him on some level, but we are not supposed to agree with him. The movie still strikes home that what he's doing is wrong and that he is the villain. The issue with both films is that they're being intentionally misinterpreted, twisted into some unholy monster that supposedly supports evil people, when in reality they're doing the exact opposite. In the film's ending scene on the Murray Franklin show, Joker makes broad blanket statements on the rich, citing Thomas Wayne's treatment of Arthur himself and his dehumanization of the populace that disagrees with his politics as a means to prove how evil they are. This, however, does not necessarily apply to Murray Franklin, a point he makes when he says explicitly, you don't know a thing about me. That's not to defend Murray's actions. He constantly mocks him in front of the whole country and brings him on the show for the express purpose of using him as comedic material at Arthur's expense. But it shows that there is a divide between Arthur's ideological stance and the objective reality of it. It's not made to be a statement in defense of abhorrent actions perpetrated by real-life monsters. It's shown as the reason, the justification, no matter how morally flawed, for one man's slow and creeping descent into madness. This isn't commentary on the upside of some kind of toxic masculinity, nor is it propaganda for some incel on 4chan. This is a gritty, real depiction of how a man can be pushed to the edge, how everyone has a breaking point, and how the actions of us, the average people of the world, can create these monsters. But it's also nuanced enough to say that yes, though they are monsters, they are still people. We have this issue of dehumanizing our opponents, whether it be in terms of religious ideology, political leanings, sexual preference, racial identity, or any manner of things we think to be lesser than us. As much evil as can exist in a man, we can't forget that there was and still is a man beneath the red-eyed veneer of a beast. Rather than giving us some extremely on-the-nose caricature like Jared Leto's embarrassing attempt at the Joker when they quite literally list his personality traits on his forehead, this film aims to explore the humanity of the villain. Yes, he is still a villain, and yes, his actions are still morally and ethically reprehensible and wrong. The movie outright says that the Joker's actions are not appropriate responses to the struggles he faced, but it's intelligent enough to show that sometimes that doesn't matter. Sometimes a man is too broken to discern right from wrong, too fed up with his treatment by the world to care about the nuances of class structure or simply bad people. Sometimes all it takes is a push, a shove in the wrong direction to turn a man into a monster. Perhaps it's that message that points at the hypocrisy of its critics that made people react to the movie with such fervent loathing. Perhaps it's the nuance that may be labeling everyone under a single derogatory term as a bad thing that got them so on edge. Perhaps even it's that the critics of the film see a bit too much of themselves in the character, and that instills a fear in them that they aren't willing to address that makes them lash out against it. Whatever for the case, I don't think it's even disputable that Joker is easily the best DC movie released since The Dark Knight, the first ray of hope for the miserable dumpster fire that is the DCEU. The effort superhero
superhero films like Logan, Deadpool, and now Joker have made to try and mix up the old and tired formula is much appreciated, and I love to see superhero films start to gradually lean more toward this dark, mature, gritty feel. That's not to say that there aren't some outliers in the mix, but none of them even come close to the cinematic wonder that is this film. If you haven't seen it, then you owe it to yourself to do so, not just to spite the dishonest media pundits trying to bury it, but to watch a rare good movie in a year otherwise plagued with a lot of really, really bad films.